Square have had a bit of a mixed time as of late, and this probably isn't going to help as the release structure for Hitman has been changed to an episodic one, and with this new release schedule comes a new pricing structure. And we can probably expect them to do something similar with Final Fantasy VII. Now, maybe not necessarily the pricing, but the release schedule, pricing structure, and just the general method of delivery, as of course the same company. Now this does explain something as it was pulled from the PlayStation Store not too long ago. Pre-orders were cancelled and people were kind of panicking. And of course this explains why they suddenly decided, hey, we're going to do things a bit differently. And the game will now be released as a quote, truly episodic AAA game experience with a major live component. So basically, on March 11th, the prologue mission and a Paris location will be released, followed by the next location set in Italy during April, and then Morocco releasing in May. From then onward, you can expect monthly content updates, including three additional locations, Thailand, the US and Japan, until the season concludes in Japan later in 2016. Now, live events, weekly and additional planned content will be releasing in between these monthly updates and have a bit of a statement from Hans Seifert, the studio head, who said, quote, We decided to take the full leap and publish Hitman as a truly episodic game experience. Part of that decision is for that little bit of extra time to ensure every location we release is at the quality level fitting for a Hitman game. But the main driving reason is that this will allow us to create a living game that will expand and evolve over time and establish a foundation for the future. This is the first game in a storyline which will continue and expand with future Hitman games. Now here comes the price, and it's okay-ish. So, an intro pack will contain Prologue and Paris levels, and will release at $15 or your regional equivalent. Each subsequent location will be priced at $10 as an add-on item to the intro. However, if you get the intro pack, you can upgrade to the full game with the $50 upgrade pack. You can also buy the full game and upcoming content for $60 up front. This includes all of the 2016 content as it's released along with the live and bonus content and for those of you who want a disc version it will be shipping at the end of 2016. Now a bit of a bitter note here as PS4 users will be handed exclusive access to the Sarajevo 6 which has six bonus contracts each of which will be released with a location and in this, Agent 47 will, quote, travel the world in pursuit of six former members of a sorry, paramilitary unit called Kikada. So, console exclusive content, which you know, if you've watched me for a while, that I absolutely detest. Doesn't matter that I own PS4 and Xbox One, because I do, but making content exclusive to a console? No. And this is the whole game? No. But the pricing is actually fairly reasonable. Hopefully this is the kind of model that they have with Final Fantasy 7. You can just pay the 60 bucks that you'd normally pay. Or you can try out the intro pack for $15 and then upgrade for $50. You do oddly end up paying $5 more for the privilege doing it that way. I'm not really sure on their logic on that one. If perhaps you're unsure, you know, you don't want to spend $60 and then you don't like it, you can just buy the intro pack and if you don't want to get the rest, then obviously you don't have to. Or you can just get each location as it comes out. Or, you know, again, you can upgrade, or you can pay 60 bucks. So you basically they're giving you a few options, or you can just wait for the disc release. And then, you know, they will probably do various sales or selling the first episode cheaper like they've been doing with Life is Strange and a few other bits as well. So while it's not amazing pricing, it's not terrible. And I think this possibly is a good sign of what they're planning for Final Fantasy VII. I hope so, because this is actually reasonable. A lot of people have been kind of worrying that they're going to charge like $40 per episode, which would be insane. But we'll see. This is obviously a different developer, but it's still the same publisher. So, uh, yeah, I don't hate this. It's a bit of an unusual plan for a AAA game, but this whole, whole game is usual, being that they're like, it's a living game and it's going to be a live experience and all of this. And the trailer we all saw at E3 didn't really tell us anything, so... I guess an unusual business structure goes with an unusual way to give us a game. We'll have to see if it's any good. We won't know, of course, until March 11th, when the prologue, mission and Paris location are released. 
So, do let me know your thoughts. What do you think of this? And perhaps does this, does this assuage some concerns for Final Fantasy VII, or does it only fuel your flames of concern? Do let me know. Thank you very much for watching. I'll see you next time.